So today we're going to change the tune a little bit and solve a CTF challenge. Cyberless is a recently released CTF challenge in Tryhack Me, and honestly, it is one of the simplest and easiest CTF challenges I have come, uh, have uh, come across. This is a free room, which means you can access the room, deploy the machines, and start practicing. We're required to find the user flag and the admin flag. What's behind the scenes? Behind the scenes here is a company named CyberLens. CyberLens is a company specialized in metadata extraction and image investigation. Basically, they offer their services through a website, and uh, through this site, you can upload an image you have found on the web, and the site will give you all the information about the image, pretty much similar to the concept of Exif, which is finding the metadata about an image. Okay, so what are we going to do? We're going to do a penetration testing of their website, CyberLens. We're going to see if we can explore the site and find any loopholes or vulnerabilities. Let's get started. So I have used the attacker machine as well as my own machine. So in the in-map scan here that's still running, I'm going to cancel this and head back to my machine. Here the in-map scan shows we have these ports. Now, if you're asking me if there are other ports open, of course there are other ports open, but I haven't used the dash p flag as shown here. So here I have used the dash p flag and honestly the scan didn't finish yet. So that's why I canceled the scan. But I'm gonna show you another way of finding the other open ports. So for now, if you run this command, you will see these open ports. So we have 80, okay, and we have some windows services running and we have RDP okay so if we browse to the web server we can see that this is the page right now one thing before we proceed make sure to add the uh, website or the IP address to the host file I have done that here on the attacker machine so we're gonna let's try the attacker machine here so nano or cat etc hosts All I have to do is to add an entry here, the IP address of the machine with the name. I assume if you are someone who has been doing CTF for a long time, this is not gonna be a problem. But if this is the first time, you can just uh, do sudo nano etc hosts. And here you can have a new line, enter the IP address, and then here goes the name. Okay. Alternatively, the room author has provided us with a quick command to execute. You can just take this command and execute it to add the host, to add the name to the host file. Okay, back to the machine. So now, if we go through the website here, as you can see, it is a metadata extractor, image extractor. Okay, so when you do a web penetration testing for website you have to go through all the sections okay and to understand the different functionalities laid down in the site the objective here is to find out if there is something wrong or some error we can uh, actually trigger in one of these services or the functionalities go to cyberlens extractor if you upload a sample image here and I click on metadata you see, we have the actual metadata extracted. So the service here is working. Now, if you go back to the nmap scan, I told you guys that there is one port, one additional port open, but is not shown in the output here because we haven't executed the full port scan. So how to find this port if you don't want to go through the full port scan, you can just go here and uh, Again, upload an image, right click on get metadata, click on inspect, and then head to network. In the network, we will examine all the requests, the number of requests uh, that the site is making when we click on the get metadata button. We click on that, and we see you have two requests. The first request goes to this URL. As you can see, CyberLens, THM, and we have another port, 61,000 three sevens slash meta I'm assuming this is the API used to 
and retrieve and extract the metadata. So indeed, there is another port open on the machine. Now, if you go back to the nmap scan and attempt to do this nmap sc sv p six one three sevens to find out what is running on the port. We want more details about the services running on the port. So we do the scan. So here, oh, no targets. Yeah, I forgot to add a target. Imagine how this could happen. So we go back and we paste in the IP address. We're gonna leave this running because we already know what is running on the service. I'm just doing this to showcase how I found the output. So we go back and if we browse to the port 61,000, Three sevens. We have a web page here, and the title says "Welcome to Apache Tika 1.17 Server." Again, during penetration testing and especially during the reconnaissance phase, we aim to extract and retrieve as much information as possible about the target, including the version of the different services and tools running on the machine. So here we have Apache Tika 1.17 running. Okay, so. In your penetration test, you're going to take a note that you have found a specific version of a software running on the machine. Now, the site doesn't have anything else to actually go through. Okay, you have this feature. From this feature, you found the port, and then you, and most of the work now is focused on this. So now we're going to have to see if there is a vulnerable, if the, if the version here is vulnerable. So what we do. We open up search exploit and we search for uh, Tika. We have two exploits or more than two exploits. Apache Tika 1517 header command injection available in Metasploit. Another one for versions below 18. Again, it is command injection. So the quickest way to do this is to launch Metasploit. So now we have found an exploit. If you go to Metasploit and let me show you how I did this on the attacker machine because it wasn't successful on my local machine. So we go back here and on Metasploit, what we're gonna do, we're gonna search for, we're gonna open Microsoft console. And from here, we're gonna search for Tika. Execute the command search Tika. So when we search Tika, we found two available exploits. The one we're looking for is this Apache Tika header command injection. In order to use the exploit, we can execute this command use followed by the exploit name. You can just copy and paste. And then to find out what you need to supply. Uh, to the exploit to work, we're going to use show options command. So in the show options, as can be seen, the required options are our hosts, our port, the target URL. In addition to these options and the local options on my machine. So scrolling down, we set the R port to 6137s. Our host is the IP address of the machine and exploit. So why I haven't set up the other parameters? Because they are already pre-populated with the local port, the local address of the machine, the attacker machine. And these are also pre-populated. You don't have to edit on these. So once we exploit, we get a meterpreter session. Okay, fine. Now we just got access to the machine, which means we compromised the web server. We have found a loophole or a vulnerability in one of the tools used on the web server. Okay, the next step now is to escalate the privileges. Now, usually when we compromise machines using Metasploit, it's better if we do everything within Metasploit. That's why, or therefore, I use this module, Local Exploit Suggester, to Enumerate the machine and find if there is any privileged escalation vectors. So what I did here, I used background okay, to exit the interpreter session. And here I used this, oh, this one. Use exploit local suggester and 
the only option I need to supply is the session number. How to find the session numbers? You can just execute sessions dash i to list all of the available interpreter sessions. We have only one, as can be seen. Obviously, it's only one, and the ID is one. So scrolling down, we set session to one to the exploit suggester, and we run. Now the exploit suggester is enumerating the machine to try to find uh, any misconfigurations or uh, security issues that could enable us to escalate the privileges. It's very much similar to WinPiece. So we have found these issues. Always an install elevated, and we have two vulnerability CVEs. The target appears to be vulnerable too. And lastly, we have this one. There's also another vulnerable service. So the next thing, we use this exploit. Always an install elevated. We start, we start with this. Simply, we execute the command use followed by the name of the exploit and then we use show options to, 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 to list out all the available or required options. We only have the session. So we set the session to one and we run and successfully we were able to get net authority system on the machine. Okay, which means we have successfully elevated the privileges. Now it's a matter of just collecting the flags. The flags are available in under uh, the administrator directory, the desktop, for the admin flag and for the user flag, you can find them under Cyberlines desktop. Okay, now let's assume that we want another method. Okay, so another method is using power up. So let me now switch to my machine. And in my machine here, we can assume that you have arrived to this step. So you have successfully exploited the Apache Tika with Metasploit. Let me see here. Yeah. So we're going to stop here at Meterpreter. So up to this step, we have exploited Apache Tika with Metasploit and we have got Meterpreter session. What if you don't want to use local suggester? You want to use another method of escalating the privileges. Here, partial comes to the play. PowerShell is a very reliable method to escalate the privileges. So we use PowerUp. PowerUp is a very renowned script that can be executed on target Windows machines to try to find privilege escalation vectors. So what I did, this is the PowerUp. I launch a Python web server on my machine in order to retrieve it and download it to the target machine. Going back here, I drop a PowerShell session, okay, and here the prompt changed to PowerShell, as you can see. I execute this command to download the PowerUp script from my local machine. And then, scrolling down, I execute the command invoke all checks. So how do I know the PowerShell script has been downloaded successfully? As you can see here in PowerUp, there was a GET request from the machine or the victim machine to the attacker machine to retrieve the power up. And then we invoke all checks. We let power up execute all checks to, and to see which one matches the current conditions of the machine. So we see there is one privilege escalation vector discovered by the PowerShell script, which is always install elevate registry key. Now, how to exploit this without using the exploit? we have to generate what is called as MSI payload. So in MSI payload, we use MSF Venom to generate a regular payload, but the extension will be MSI. So we use this command, okay, here. With this command, we will be able to generate an MSI payload. MSI is a Microsoft Windows installer extension. After we generate the payload successfully, again, we start, don't forget to start a web server on your machine to download the payload. And since the payload will be executed on a target machine, I have to launch a listener beforehand. So the listener uses port 4546 because it is the port I used while generating the payload. 
So now the, with the port up and running, I can now go back to the machine and in under desktop directory, I can use the get to download the payload. Okay, I named the payload as payload MSI. And then to execute the payload, we use this command MSI execute. This is the method execute an MSI or Windows and a solar from the command line without um, any pop up. So we use the quiet mode and we execute the payload. After we do that, okay, we execute who am I? So on the target machine, we are cyberless. But don't forget that upon executing the payload, you should receive a session here on your listener. Okay. So on my listener, there is a session opened and I am the net authority system. So that was it, guys. Don't tell me this is a difficult challenge. It is very easy, guys. It is very recommended for those who are getting started. And most of all, it is a free room. Anyone can deploy the virtual machines. You just need an account. So guys, that was it for today. I hope you like this and definitely I'm going to see you later.